Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are making this really cool book cover for, this one's for a journal or a scheduler or a diary, but you can use any book you like. Uh, we're using two yarns. This thicker yarn for the outside, it's a chunky size 5. I used it all and ran out here. <laughs> yarn chicken um, for the outside so a thicker yarn for the outside and a thinner yarn for the inside I used a size a thickness of three for the inside it just in natural cotton you can use any yarn you like you'll also need a crochet hook and a bunch of stitch markers let's get started so to measure how wide or how long you want your foundation chain to be. Lay your book out flat so it's flat down, cover side up, pages side down, and line up this one side and then go all the way over. It says 12 inches. Good. This gap here of the spine, that is going to be, that's going to give our stretch and hold our cover nicely. So I'm going to make my foundation chain 12 inches long. You make yours however long your, your, it needs to be for your book measurement. So you start by making a slip knot. Leave a long enough tail to weave in later. And you're going to make a chain as long as your measurement was. Mine was 12 inches. And you're going to do it in a multiple of two. So to, to do that you just go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, for as long as you need your chain to be. There is my chain to 12 inches. Chain one for your turning chain into the second chain from the hook, so not what's on your hook, but the next one is one, the one after that is two, into the second chain you're going to do a single crochet so just put your hook in grab your yarn and bring it back wrap your yarn and take off two so that is our first single crochet into the next stitch we're going to do a double crochet so wrap your yarn go into that stitch grab your yarn and bring it back wrap your yarn and take off two wrap your yarn and take off two into the next chain stitch single crochet so no wrapping your yarn if you're not familiar with your stitches, there's a tutorial on my channel. I'll put the link above. There's a refresher. And then wrap your yarn into the next stitch. Do a, dub a double crochet. So you're going to alternate doing a double crochet and a single crochet. One into each chain all the way back along your work. Don't worry about your work all curling up like that. That is normal. It won't be so annoying as it gets bigger. So alternate one single crochet and one double crochet all across your chain. One into each stitch. And I'll meet you at the end. Into the last chain, do your double crochet. Now chain one, turn your work. You can also check now how long your cover is going to be. Mine is about 12 inches. It's a smudge less, but I'm not stretching it. So I could stretch it way more, but I'm happy with that. So we don't need the tape measure for a minute. So we did our chain one. Now into that first stitch, which is the top of our double crochet from down below, we're going to do a single crochet. And into the next stitch, a double crochet. So we're going to alternate doing single crochets into the top of double crochets, and double crochets into the top of single crochets. So if it's a tall stitch, it gets a short stitch, and if it's a short stitch, it gets a tall stitch but each row is going to be starting with a single crochet and ending with a double crochet. So keep doing this all the way along your work and I'll meet you at the end of this row.
At the end of the row, make sure you're going into your last stitches. So I have two stitches left. So single crochet into that one. And then this little guy here on the end, that's a stitch. So make sure you go into that one. That is going to be your last double crochet. So all your rows are going to end the same way and all your rows are going to start the same way. So chain one to turn and turn your work and single crochet into that first stitch. The very first one. Not your chain, but that first stitch. And then alternate your stitches going all the way back. So you're going to keep doing this row after row until your panel, until this back cover, is almost the full height. So I would do it, if it's lined up at the bottom, if my foundation chain is just along this bottom edge, I would crochet up until it is about half an inch from the top or one centimeter. It will still stretch, uh, so maybe stop one row before the very top, but we will adjust that when we get to it. So keep going, I'll meet you when you're up here. So I think I finished and I had just enough yarn. So. You want to line up the center with the bottom of your book and a little bit, a smudge shorter. If you have a choice, you want it to be a bit shorter because crochet will always stretch. So this piece is finished. If we open up our book the same way as before, it covers the book. And if we shut it, it's a bit short on one side, but we want that because it's always, it's going to stretch. So that is good. I'm really happy with it. So to finish off your row, you're going to chain one and then cut your yarn and pull it through. I don't know if I'll have enough to join in this. Wouldn't that be great if I did? Uh, so you can cut your yarn and pull it through. I'm just going to leave mine with a stitch marker. I'm going to try to join with that. Ooh, that's going to be yarn chicken extraordinaire. So I'm going to put a stitch marker in there and then try to be lucky. So this one gets set aside. Back to our book. Now we're going to be making the, ins the, the panels for the inside of the book. So I'm going to be using a thinner yarn. To make the inside panel of your book, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be using a thinner yarn. If you're using a thinner yarn for your whole book, you can use the same yarn for the inside cover. I'm just going to be using this thinner cotton. It's the closest I have that matches that is thinner. So you're going to start the same way. We're going to make a, a slip knot and a chain. And we want to chain about an inch shorter than the spine of the book, more than two thirds. So if we measure the inside of my book, I could measure this way around. So it goes, we can see the right measurement. So the inside of the book is a, about five and three quarters of an inch. So I would make mine about four inches, four and a half. You want you don't want it all the way because you don't want the cover going all the way to the spine. It'll make your book closing a bit awkward. And you want it definitely more, it has to be more than halfway. And it has to be less than all the way. So I'm going to aim for about four inches. So get your slip knot onto your hook and make a chain. And we're just doing single crochet so it doesn't have to be a multiple of anything. About like that. You want it to be not the whole the whole width of your front of the book. So I'm doing a chain of 18 for this big book here, or my diary. So I'm going to chain one and into the second stitch 
one single crochet and I'm going to make one single crochet into each stitch going back. So nothing but single crochet because we don't want it to stretch and single crochet has the least amount of stretch. So one into each stitch all the way back. Make sure you go into your last chain, your last stitch for your last single crochet. Chain one, turn your work, and you're going to go into this first stitch. And now all the way back. At the end of the row, make sure you go into that last stitch. You can turn it up and look for those V's, or that V. Because you want to go into that last stitch to make your single crochet. Chain one, turn, go into the first stitch, and do that all the way back. When your inside panel is about the same height as your outside panel, we are going to do a slip stitch down the one side. To slip stitch down the side, I'm going to chain one just to give myself some space. Now into this first hole, we're going to go into each of these holes down the side. And we're going to sli slip stitch quite snug. You don't want to do big slip stitches. So just do a small little slip stitch just underneath the hook. And into the next space, small slip stitch, next space, small slip stitch. So we're going to be slip stitching, let me find a good color, into these holes. So we're going to slip stitch into this one, and into this one, and into this one. So in between each of these rows, we're going to do a slip stitch. So in, in between that, here, 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 slip stitching all the way down. So make your, your loop snug, so lots of tension, into the next space, slip stitch, and pull your hook small again, into the next space, small slip stitch. So you're going to do a tight little slip stitch all the way down this side. So keep going like this and I'll meet you at the end of this row. At the end, make sure you get all the way there. So keep going until you're, you did your last spot and now into that chain at the very top. We want to slip stitch there too because we really want to get to that corner. So now we're right up at the corner. So now we're going to chain one and cut our yarn pull our hook up and our yarn through and tighten that down to secure. So now this slip stitch helps this side not stretch so much. So make sure you remember how many chains you did across to start. So for mine I did 18 and you're going to make one more of these panels like that. Now get your cover. They're both the same but whatever side you want to have out there's a flaw in my yarn here, so I'm going to put this for my inside. Like, this is going to be the outside of my book cover. So if you have any imperfections in your yarn or your outside cover, just put that facing side up now. And take your two inside panels, and the part that you slip stitched is going to be towards the center. So we're going to lay one like that, and we're going to take the other one with the slip stitched edge also facing the center. Like that. Now you're going to need a whole bunch of stitch markers. We're going to start by pinning it together. So put your stitch marker in the corner of your inside piece, and then put your stitch marker in the corner of your outside piece, and just pin it together. So we're going to do that for both the corners first. So into the corner of the inside panel and into the corner of the outside panel. And just clip them shut. And I'm going to stretch this inside one a little bit. 
I'm not going to stretch the outside, I'm going to stretch the inside. Just a bit. Um, it's, it's totally up to you, but if you stretch the inside, it helps the outside stretch. So I just pulled it a bit. And you can also just line up your stitches. You can kind of see where they're lining up. And I want them to line up. So you could count it that way also, but I'm just going to give it a pull. And then again, put my stitch marker into the corner. And put my stitch marker into the corresponding stitch on the outside panel. So I pulled it over a bit. You want it to be, you want the inside to be stretched. That's what's going to hold it nice and tight. So I'm going to turn it around and do the same for the bottom side or the bottom edge. So stitch marker into the corner and pinch this one that's lined up and then just kind of snug that over and hook it onto the back. Like so. Turning it again. So now holding these two together. This side all stretches like crazy. So I'm just going to pinch it and I'm going to tie it down or pin it together in the center. Doesn't matter as long as like when you're pulling it that's how it lines up for you. I think that's about right. Let me check. Yeah. You can kind of walk your fingers to the middle. And you can pin it as often as you want. Just so when you're when you're stitching it together uh, it, you don't go too far off track. You can pinch it, you can um, pin it on the sides too if you want. And we'll do the same on this other side. My yarn out of the way. My loop pulled up. So find the inside corner or the top corner of your inside panel and the top corner of your outside panel. I'm going to leave that stitch alone there because that's where my yarn is still attached. I don't know if it's going to work, <laughs> but I'm going to try. And now this side of the edge, so same thing, put your stitch marker into the corner of your inside panel and then into the corner of your outside panel. And then I'm going to do these ones. You could count your stitches if you really wanted to. I don't think you need to, but we all know I'm not a counter. So I'm just going to stretch that one over. And inside panel corner with my stitch marker. And outside panel stitch. And clip that together and do the same on this side over here giving it a little stretch just to the inside panel and then pinning it together making sure I caught both stitches from the inside panel and the outside and now we're just going to walk our fingers along this edge to pin it I'll grab my stitch markers and walk into the center with your fingers and just pin that together. There we go. Now I don't have much of this yarn left, but I'm going to give it a try. <sighs> Let's see. Your ends, you can just poke them inside this pocket here, or you can work them in. Up to you. So I'm going to put my yarn back on my hook, take that stitch marker out. If you're joining with a new yarn, um, go ahead and just join your yarn wherever you're doing it. So I'm going to slip stitch to that top panel to get that connected. 
turn my work chain one to give me some space and now I'm gonna go into each stitch going down this side and single crochet into that corner to start my side and I'm gonna single crochet one into one all the way down your stitches don't have to line up you're just gonna stretch it out and go for it and the side that you want to be pretty is the outside that side over here the inside doesn't totally matter so just keep it kind of stretched out and single crochet your way down you're not doing one into each stitch you're kind of doing one uh, well not quite each stitch maybe maybe every stitch and a half it's gonna help that your book cover not stretch so you can kind of eyeball it as you're going along and just check that it's looking pretty on that side and that it's lined up when you get to your center stitch marker because see if you lined it up one one see it's a bit off so like that so now just keep going down making single crochets all the way down. When you get to the corner, single crochet into that corner and again you can tuck your tail inside unless of course you want to sew it in. And you're going to make three single crochets into that corner space so that's two and here is three so that is just going to get us around that corner. Turn your work. Now we're going to work our way back along this side and we're stretching our inside panel and we're not stretching our outside panel. So pretty much, oops, that's my tail, not my stitch. Pretty much one into each stitch tail behaving. What is up? There we go. Going back down this side. And on this row, you want to do one stitch into every stitch of your outside panel. So each one of your on your outside is going to be getting a stitch. There we go, that lined up quite well. So take out your stitch marker and into this last corner of your inside panel, you're gonna do a really small single crochet because it's gonna get a lot of pressure. That's gonna be like a stress point of your book cover. So do a small single crochet, lots of tension, and a small single crochet into the next. And now just one going across. Just a regular. One single crochet into each stitch until we reach our joining area. So this stitch here, we're joining in the next one. So I'm going to do a small, I'm going to put my hook into that corner and into the next stitch. And here I'm going to do a small single crochet as well because this is going to be another stress point. And then keep single crocheting to the corner. So into the corner space, three single crochets into the same spot. So that's one, two, three into the same spot. Turn your work or rotate your work. Now we're going to be working our way down the side. So remember you're going to pinch where your stitch marker is and kind of stretch out your work to line it up and you're going to single crochet 
your way down, not quite one into every stitch. Working your way down. Oh, it's going to be close. This yarn chicken's making me nervous. When you get to your corner, remember to go into your top panel and into your bottom panel and three double crochets. One, two, three. All into the same spot. Turn your work. And you can kind of see all my corners are curling up. That's my phone, sorry about that. Um, don't worry about it. Your book is going to hold all that out and you want it to be like that. You want it to be tight. Ish. My yarn! It's not looking good. This We might have to change yarn for the bottom of my joining. So now keep going along here making sure you go into each of the stitches of your outside panel so it looks pretty and then make sure you go into that corner stitch that's going to count as a stitch and into the next stitch so this is where we're doing our small single crochet boop pull it through no oh, jiminy crickets I'll do a tight single crochet in there and a small one into the next one as well and now we just keep going across this part we can do a bit relaxed it's not a big deal I'm running out of yarn I only have this much to go <sighs> okay so into when you get to your stitch marker take your stitch marker out and now go into your the corner stitch of your top panel. I'm going to try to go into that slip stitch just so it's a bit more yarn on my hook. And into the next stitch below and grab my yarn, make a tight, small single crochet. And then regular single crochet all the way until your yarn ends or you get to the corner. Oh gee whiz, my yarn. I'm not going to make it. Didn't make it. Yarn chicken. Eh. So sad. So I'm going to have to join my yarn. I'm just going to use this chunky mm chamois chenille I have left over from my super easy hexicardi uh, just to do this tiny bit here so I'm going to start my single crochet and I'm going to finish it with my new yarn so I'm going to put a loop of my new yarn on my hook and pull that through to finish and then just start single crocheting with my new yarn So sad. So close. When you get to the corner, that's already been joined, so you can just slip stitch to join. Just gonna poke my hook in, grab my yarn and bring it back, and bring it through. I'm gonna chain one, cut my yarn, pull my yarn, my hook up and my yarn through, and pull that down to secure. So that one is knotted and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to poke my hook in to those stitches and drag my tail through somehow like that. So it's on the inside of my work. So grab your book and slide the front cover in. I just poked my tail in with my book now, so optional. Get it right to the corner. 
my funny yarn. Not so bad. So that is the front cover or the back cover, one of the covers, depending where you want your funny yarn to be, if you have to join any, that is. And then bend your book back like that, because we are going to poke in this side now. And tuck our tail while we're doing it. Poke this side in. Making sure your book corners get into your corners. Stretch that one down. And now we're going to shut our book. Ta-da! Oh, it's really great. Get my stitch markers out of the way. How cute is that? It feels great. And it covers the end. Remember we made it a bit shorter, but look how much it stretches over the ends of our book. Love it. Opens up great. Love it. This is, this is really good. It's not too stretchy. But you can still poke business cards or whatever you need, little notes underneath here. And the back cover as well. And we did it thinner so that it shuts easier. You can see it still wants to stay open a little bit if you leave it, but that will get better over time. Your book will start behaving better, but we, that's also why we use the thin yarn for the inside of our book. Yay! I love it! Now I'm going to be writing down all sorts of things to do in my diary because my diary is so fun now. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. If you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments below. And if you have made one or you're going to make one, join our Facebook group. I'll also put the link in the description box below. And post your pictures. I'd love to see yours, what color yarn you used, what yarn you used, and how yours turned out. So thanks so much for watching. Stay hooked.